Welcome to the Daily Update, where I will go over the action in the market for Thursday, January 20th, and then we'll look to see how things shape up for Friday, January 21st. It was a pretty negative day, again on Thursday. We tried to go up to the short-term resistance, but when that failed, we saw sellers come in with a vengeance on Thursday. So at the open, there was a positive open, and it looked like we were going to rebound. We have some of our indicators that are showing short-term oversold conditions. Even some of our intermediate-term indicators are starting to look that way. And it looked like if a bounce was going to happen, it would probably have happened on Thursday. And they tried. But we hit that overhead resistance. We didn't see renewed buying at that level. And so prices fell back. And then we saw an acceleration in the selling on Thursday. So we hit the overhead resistance right at about 4,600 on the S&P 500. We failed to break through that. And then what we're seeing a little bit of right now anyway is selling into strength. When you buy the dips, you're buying on weakness. Well, as prices rebound a little bit, we're seeing a lot of selling into strength. And that is pretty negative right now. At the close, the selling gain momentum right into the close. We closed at the lows. We were down 1.1% on Thursday, and the charts continue to show weakness and technical damage. What we saw in yesterday's video was looking like an, a short-term oversold condition. Well, we just saw a continuation of that in today's session. So we could be looking at some kind of a bounce, but the technical picture is getting weaker. We were above average with volume, and the fixation now is becoming weak technicals. This little buy the dip strategy is really failing some people. So people are starting to look at their charts and go, hmm, this is not looking as good as it was before. It doesn't mean we can't rebound, but we're going through some more pain than what we're used to going through for the last two years or so. And of course, we're in the middle of earnings season and the markets are fixated on inflation and interest rates. Some things that we can say about Thursday's session is there was continued broad-based selling in all of the major indexes after we failed at that rebound attempt. And the buying the dip has been unsuccessful, at least for right now. The market continues to be overvalued. The trend condition is, and I've changed this a little bit, it looks like there's a negative trend that could be developing. Some of you you saw that negative trend yesterday. Well, we saw a bit more confirmation of that on Thursday. And so those people that want to get into short positions that are trend-based, that might be a little bit more advantageous for them if they're more aggressive. If you're more conservative, you still may want to wait a day or two and see how the ADX shapes up. And the bias right now is negative. So let's look at the session on Thursday. First, at sentiment, we're still in about the middle. Even with all of this downturn that we've seen over the last week or so, things haven't really turned negative in an emotional state. That means that we might still have more room to fall. It doesn't mean we're going to go straight down necessarily, but the market overall is not putting a lot of fear into the market. Here's the chart. We're in mid-range right now. Then looking at the VIX, we did see fear spike up a bit with the VIX, but it could go a lot higher. So we're seeing a lot of hedging going on. That's what the professional traders like to do, and even individual investors. When you don't hedge, that means your return is slightly higher. When you have to put on a hedge, that bites into your overall returns. Well, as we start to go down, and if you're in long positions, you want to buy puts for protection, and that makes the VIX go up. Looking at the sectors, pretty much all of them, 10 out of the 11, were negative. And the ones that have been negative this week continue to be weak. We have discretionaries at the very top, materials, which had been doing okay. That's more of a value play. That's a pretty significant decline on Thursday. And of course, 
techs, they're continuing to get hammered. Industrials, which is also more of a value play. So we're seeing more of a cross the board decline, at least on Thursday. The only sector that was up are the utilities and they're heavily influenced by interest rates. Then here's the chart showing that energy is still leading the way. Others, since we're still early in the year, we haven't seen any real developments yet. As far as inflation, we're looking at a continued drop in the BDI, which as I state in all the videos this week, either that means this indicator is useless or it's telling us that inflation isn't as bad as everybody thinks it is right now. As far as FedWatch, we're pretty much, we're just over 94% with the probability of interest rates staying the same on January 26th. We're seeing a real increase in them raising interest rates in March. We're up at a little over 82%. And then I'm starting to track also later in the year, May, we're about even right now. And this will change all the time as new reports come out, as things happen in the world that dictate, are they going to continue raising interest rates or are they pretty much done for right now? And then I also look at June, where it's also slightly close to even right now as far as are they going to continue raising rates? I haven't looked out further than this because it's really not telling us much at this point. Here's the intraday chart over on the right-hand side. We did have a positive open. There wasn't a huge gap. We tried to go up in this black line that I've been talking about in the videos before this. We tried to get right up to that level. And right when we hit the black line, it stayed there for quite a bit. I was watching this. And then when we broke above that, it's like, okay, here comes the rebound. Well, we just didn't see any follow through to that. And we ended up going sideways. A lot of the day traders and short term traders saw that and they go, hmm, I don't really like this. I better get out of my long position. That fed into some selling. Then this black line became resistance again. When we couldn't break through that, we broke down a little bit, went sideways. And then as we got closer to the close, we saw a real pickup in selling. So it was an overall negative day. We were down 1.1%. Looking at our daily charts, I've changed this a little bit because we're not really seeing a higher low right now. We are at what potentially could be support. We're just a little bit below that. So if you're a purist and anytime we drop below that, you say support has been broken, eh, sometimes we kind of get in the range of support, but, but on a closing basis, we are below the previous lows that were set back in December. So we're not seeing this continuation of higher highs and higher lows. We still are seeing a real weakness in the growth stocks. They continue to, to decline as the value stocks consider, or as value stocks are seeing more renewed interest right now. As far as our trend, this is what I'm talking about with, it looks like a negative trend is developing. We have decidedly turned above the exponential moving average. You may have taken advantage of that yesterday. However, if you like to wait for a little more confirmation, we now have a more definite cross. We're still below 20 if you use static numbers, but if we see renewed either sideways action or selling, this trend line will probably go up. And since the red line is way above the green line now, that means that the trend is negative. As far as our breadth, we saw not as strong as we've seen in other days this week, but still the declining issues far outpaced advancing issues, both based on price and volume. And we're seeing a continued rollover based on price. We've dropped below the moving average now based on volume. The ratio continues to fall because of what we've seen in the previous chart. So that's negative. And we're getting down to the point where we've hit bottom before, but this could go lower. You can see in the COVID plunge, we were pegged near the bottom. Well, what we want to do is see good solid breadth and this blue line turn back up and eventually cross above the red line. 
Then looking at new highs and new lows, they continue to trail off. We see a negative trend developing. And then down at the bottom, we're also seeing the 10-day moving average start to go or continue to go down. Short term, we see that the 20 period moving average, the simple moving average continues to be below the red, which is the exponential moving average, and that's negative. Looking at our moving averages, 20 period moving averages continue to fall and are not necessarily extreme right now. The same thing can be said with the 50 period moving average, and we're seeing more of a rollover with the 200 period moving average. Now, when we hit the lows in December, we got just about to where we are now. So if things are gonna turn around and go back positive, we want to see some kind of a really strong rebound attempt made, or are we just gonna flounder around a little bit before continuing to go down, or are we seeing a dead cat bounce right now? The MACD continues to be negative and is showing more of an extreme down reading. The STO is also going lower and we're about at points that we were at in December. We didn't go lower in the last year, but we're getting pretty extreme as far as based on price. We still have a little bit further to go based on volume. The McClellan oscillator is starting to get extreme as well, and it is negative. Since we dropped below this blue line, we want to look for some kind of a rebound that it looked like was gonna happen on Thursday, but didn't really materialize. The Stoke RSI continues to be pegged in oversold territory. And then I have a number of rate of change charts. Here's the five period where we're showing an extreme reading lower than what we've seen over the last year. Looking at the 10 period, we're also seeing an extreme negative reading, but it actually turned up slightly on Thursday. So that may portend to an attempt at some kind of a rebound. Then looking at an even a little bit longer one, the 20 period rate of change, we're getting near an extreme negative reading. And then this is a new one. This goes out 150 days and we're seeing real weakness as far as the rate of change indicator we could still go lower, but we haven't been this low, at least on this chart over the last year. Then I'm also showing a 200 rate of change going back pretty much one year where we haven't been this low. We're getting down to this red line, which can signal some kind of an extreme reading. Then a new one that I have is standard deviation. That's how fast our price is moving. When this line goes up, that means we're getting away from the average price that we're seeing. And we're about at levels that we've seen at other times before we saw some kind of a reversal. Doesn't mean this can't go higher, but we're taking a lot of these things together and they're starting to form a picture that if the market is gonna have a chance of getting back to being more positive, we're going to have to see something pretty soon, either on Friday's session, which hopefully may carry over into Monday, or we might see some sideways action on Friday because people don't really want to go into positions before the weekend and maybe some continuation on Monday. We don't know how that's going to play out right now. Then there's another chart that I'm showing for the first time here. This is the percent B. Up on the top here, these are Bollinger Bands. And when we, we usually stay within these Bollinger Bands, but when we start to go outside of them, meaning the price is going pretty fast, that's when we see the percent B really start to pick up. Well, we're going down. And so the percent B, after showing an extreme positive reading near the end of the year, now we're starting to show an extreme negative reading. It could still go lower, but this is just something to be aware of and might feed into the theory that we might see some kind of a bounce on Friday. On the intermediate term, we're still looking negative overall. We're seeing the 50 period moving average really starting to roll over and price is below both of those. The PMO is decidedly negative and starting to get to an extreme negative reading. 
We're also negative based on price and volume. Also, the PMO, PMO is looking more negative as far as the stocks in the S&P 500 that are showing a rising PMO signal. That's getting down to extreme negative. We're seeing a real tapering off. And the pause is because I have to look at the words and they're really small and it's kind of hard for me to see that. But we're seeing a real tapering off of buy signals generated by the PMO indicator. And then those PMOs that are actually above zero is also trailing off. The BPI, bullish percent index, based on point and figure charts, it continues to fall. Our ribbon is still holding up as far as the colors. The blue line is starting to roll over a little bit, but we're seeing price into this moving average rainbow that we have right now. We really start to take note of this when we, when we see the lines start to jumble together and actually look like they're crossing. Stochastics, short term, we're oversold. Intermediate term, we're oversold. Longer term, we're still headed down, but we're not at an oversold condition yet. <coughs> Excuse me. The vortex continues to be negative, although it's flattened out a little bit and it's a negative reading on Thursday. The summation index based on price continues to fall as well as based on volume. All of our momentum oscillators are pretty much showing the same thing. They're all trailing down. The MACD is getting a little close to being extreme, but some of these do have a little bit further to go before they're generating some kind of an oversold indication. Another new chart is called the Chaikin Money Flow. And when these, this histogram along the bottom, when it's green and going up, that's very positive. When it's red and going down, that's negative. Well, we've been chopping around in the green area. Well, on Thursday, we finally dropped down and it's giving us a negative signal now. The, CS, the CCI that I've been showing were in extreme negative territory. The Williams percent R is also pegged negative. The ulcer index is continuing to go up, meaning that a lot of people, or at least this indicator, suggests that a lot of people are getting very nervous about things right now. So we, when we're falling, that's when we see this indicator rise. So it doesn't tell us what price is doing. It just shows us the magnitude of the, of the price, specifically the downward price movement. And this is just a longer term look. We can go higher. But based on where we've been over the last year or so, we're starting to get more of an extreme negative reading as far as the strength of selling. Then the Copic, it's, it's continuing to go down longer term. It could go down further, but we're getting into the territory where if something is going to change, we're getting pretty close to that needing to happen. Then the other indicator that I brought up in yesterday's video, this is one of my experimental ones, and I'll try to make this a little bit bigger. If I can find the right button. This, I call this the boom indicator. When we, when we go down or up too far too fast, well, you can see we're, we're getting pretty extreme based on both, of the, both these um, MACDs that I have plotted down at the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are take one videos, folks. So, okay, now I need to go back. Let me make this smaller again. It's supposed to go to the next one. Okay, it's not advancing here. Oh, I'm in airplane mode. That's good, even though I'm not on an airplane right now. Okay. And we have a little problem here. So I'm going to have to share this out again. Don't you just love this? This is completely different than how I'm used to doing these videos. So you're getting to see kind of a behind the scenes look here. And I don't want to stop the recording and do this again because I want to get this thing posted just as quick as possible. Okay. Yes, very professional right now. Okay, let's go back to where we were at. 
one thing I want to make sure is this this still even recording. I can't tell. Okay, yes. I really tried. I wanted to make this. I, I use completely different software when I usually make these videos. And this, I, I do use what I'm showing you as far as to display them, but I use a completely different approach when I'm making these things. Let's get back to where we were at. Okay. All right. Here's the Copic longer term. That's where we were. Oh, and then the boom indicator showing an extreme negative reading. Some of the systems, yeah, the elder system is red and the moving average is rolling over. The MACD is starting to get extreme negative. The SAR is still showing negative with the dots above. Some of our different charts, the Heiken Ashi chart is still negative. The Keggy chart moved down a little bit more in the red area, so that's negative. The Keggy added another little box on Thursday. That's negative. The three-line break continues to show weakness as well. The equi volume continues to go down. We're not really seeing anything on the EMV1, but on the EMV14, yeah, we're starting to get extreme. Point and figure added another zero on Thursday. So that's negative as well. Longer term. We're seeing both the S&P and the equal weight S&P continue to fall pretty much hand in hand. As far as the broad, broad, broad market, we're seeing the S&P decline, the mid caps, which never hit a new high at the end of 2021, they're showing weakness and the same thing with the small caps. So in a good, healthy environment, you want to see small and mid caps really leading the way because people are willing to take more risk on the, in these companies. Well, when they get a little more nervous, they don't invest in the lesser known stocks and they tend to go more into the blue chip stocks, which is the S&P 500. And this is just a longer term view of the same chart. Um, the stock versus bond, you still, even though bonds have turned up slightly, the market is still more favorable towards stocks. You have a better chance of getting a return. That could be changing. And that's why we watch this chart every day. If we really start to go up, and especially if the blue line crosses above the red line, that means it's better to be in bonds for investments. The FANG stocks, they got hit on Thursday. ARC continues even it was up a little bit because Kathy has been doing some contrarian things she you would have been better off getting in the S&P back through 2021 than trying to follow what Kathy Woods is doing and so since she has things set up a little bit different the arc was actually up a little bit on Thursday the industrials, yeah, we've broken below the 200 period moving average. It doesn't mean it's the end of the world because we broke that back in early December and we were able to come up and recover out of that. But this is a negative picture and we're right down at S1, the support level. So we wanna be watching 34,715 on the Dow. This is just a longer term look. I just put these longer term charts in just to give some perspective because we can get whittled down into a smaller chunk of time that we're looking at, but we lose the context when you're gauging it against the bigger picture. Then Dow theory, we're, and I've changed these charts up a little bit. We're seeing the Dow going down, transports going down after not hitting a high. That's a non-confirmation. And even though utilities have been doing well lately, they're coming off of a high, but saw some real weakness earlier in the year. The mid caps <clears throat> also continue to, ble to be below S1 and below the 200 period moving average. We're starting to see the 50 roll over. The NASDAQ, same thing. We dropped below S2 on Thursday. That's pretty negative with the 50 moving average rolling over. 
And so the, this is, and you look down at the bottom and volume was above average. So this is pretty negative. Things are going to have to really turn to shift back into a positive environment. The NASDAQ 100 also broke through S2 and broke below the 200-day moving average. That's pretty negative, folks. With the NYSE composite, these are all the stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. We're right down at the 200-day moving average. We'll see if we drop below that. We did drop below that before, and we're able to come up out of that. But this would be just another technical factor that we're seeing if we break below this, just confirming that things are turning more negative. The total stocks also are showing the decline. The Wilshire also continues to be below the 200 day moving average and we're coming down close to the S2 level. This is longer term of that chart. The all stocks, we're getting down to the 200 day moving average. So if, again, if we're gonna see some kind of a bounce, this would be a good place for that to happen. If we really drop below that, that would be the first time since the COVID plunge that has happened. Other stocks, Asia continues to be a little bit more positive in China and emerging markets. Europe is kind of going sideways, Japan, is looking pretty good. They have a slight upward trend where the S&P is rolling over. That's pretty much what we've been seeing the last few days. As far as the broad market, copper continues to go sideways, but it was up on Thursday. The dollar actually had a pretty good end on Thursday. We're back up into the high 95s right now. We're at 95.72. So we just keep an eye on that to see if, if the dollar is staying together. This is the weekly chart, which really won't finish until after Friday's session. But as of Thursday, we've crossed back above the blue moving average. Lumber had another down day. I don't know, there's a joke in there somewhere. Oil was down slightly on Thursday. So there wasn't any real catalyst. You didn't really see anything as we go to the bond charts later. When we're looking at oil, we're looking at the dollar, we're looking at different things that have been causing problems earlier in the week. They really didn't happen on Thursday. And so we just saw selling within the stock market itself. Gold, after having a pretty good day on, Thursday, on Wednesday, dropped down a little bit on Thursday. Silver, just, man, look at this. It's really shooting up, and it might be bouncing into the 50-period, excuse me, the 200-day moving average. Again, we might see a bit of a pullback here. We saw that back in November. That may happen again. The CRB was up slightly, not very much on Thursday. So there wasn't outside influences necessarily that were really impacting the market, the stock market and the S&P. Looking at bonds, we did see 30-year stayed pretty flat, 10-year stayed flat, the five-year actually declined a little bit, and this is what's amazing. Look at this stinking two-year. Just a few months ago, we're down around 0 0.2, 0 0.3. We're gaining up over 1% now, which is nothing to brag about, but compared to where it has been, this is a pretty significant move. Then we're seeing the yield curve continuing to go up. We're not anywhere in danger of it being inverted right now. World yields, the US yields continue to climb. Japan, or excuse me, UK, Japan was down a little bit and Germany continues to be negative. The world bond index continues to show overall weakness. As far as the economic calendar, let me make this bigger. Hopefully I'll, oh, I don't wanna be in airplane mode again. I did that last time. Okay, so the reports that came out on Thursday, it, it, it's kind of a light week. Retail sales was the big one um, last week, but we saw initial claims 
coming out at 286,000. Now that's above 211,000, but because that's unemployment, I treat that as negative. And so that's why it's in red. We saw a real continuation or a real high number in the, uh, in the okay, let me back up. We saw a continuation of high numbers in continuing claims, but I usually don't put that number down. It's not a real big impact, even though briefing.com says it has a high impact. Eh, sometimes. Existing home sales, this is red because it's negative. We came down from 6.42 million to 6.18. What I'm really watching right now are new homes, the, they're the new homes that are being built, the housing starts that you see here. That's a big one because these are for brand new houses where existing homes, those are houses that of course already exist. So they're just changing hands. In a real healthy environment, you'd like to see new homes actually being built. Then on Friday, we see we have the leading economic index. I don't pay attention to that very much because a lot of these things are known before this report even comes out. That's why it has a real low impact on what's happening. So our conclusion is the S&P is developing a downtrend. That's what I'm going with right now. We could see a rebound and that could shift things back to being more neutral. But based on what we see right now, we are developing into a downtrend. The short term and intermediate term bias are negative, but we're still holding up fairly well in the long term perspective of things. On Friday, we do have a very light, light economic report day. It's just the leading economic indicators and, of course, earnings season. So thank you very much. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you again on Monday. Now I'm going to try to turn this off here. Yeah, I just love these. This is like reality TV.